So it is that time of year again where those of us Muslims who live in the West, we live in non-Muslim countries, we are noticing that so much of the society around us are celebrating you know, in the stores, they have Christmas music playing, they have the decorations. So it's been sort of typical that yearly we find on YouTube the different clerics, different people giving da'wah amongst the Muslims, addressing certain issues related to this holiday. How should we conduct ourselves? Can we actively participate? Can we celebrate? What's the best way to go about it? People speaking on these topics hypothetically, but I've lived a lot of it, being somebody who embraced Islam, who comes from a Christian background, who grew up celebrating Christmas. I experienced the transition from that way of life to Islam and how I conducted myself, some of the situations I was in, some of the things that um, I went through. So I want to share that with some people that hopefully uh, can benefit, inshallah. So the first reminder to mention is the fact that this life is a test. Allah created death and life in order to test which of us are best in deeds. So as basic a concept that is, many of us seem to have forgotten that. We, we have forgotten that we are going to be tested, that we might be in situations where we might feel uncomfortable. <laughs> we can't just follow and submit to every desire we have. The religion is not something that we twist and play around with in order to cater to our desires. So let us remember what this life is all about. We are going to be resurrected in the hereafter and held accountable for how we behaved, what we did. The second point I wanted to convey is in regards to giving da'wah. If we are around people who are committing shirk, they're committing the worst of sins, they're worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're associating partners with him. This is not something that we should want for the people around us. We're not doing them a favor by facilitating them in their disobedience. Isa alayhi salam does not want anybody to worship him. So the reality of this holiday is it is misguidance upon misguidance. You have people who are worshiping Isa alayhi salam, and you also have people who have even incorporated into that pagan rituals. Now, of course, people are free to make their own decisions regarding these things. But my point is, you should want to give them da'wah, right? You should want to convey the, the truth about this holiday, about Isa alayhi salam, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are you doing living in a Western country surrounded by non-Muslims and you just do not care about them? You don't care about them being guided to the truth. You don't care about them being resurrected upon shark and misguidance. So we shouldn't be disrespectful and condescending but we also shouldn't go to the other extreme where we are encouraging something that is not going to benefit them in the hereafter. And that leads me to the third point, which is that sometimes Allah will test us through other human beings. And this is something that I really hope people will pay close attention to because a lot of Muslims nowadays seem to be oblivious to the fact that respect is something that is earned. People do not respect those who cower and are just begging for acceptance. People who have no dignity, no integrity, they don't stand upon anything. And people will literally test you. It's not always malicious or disrespectful. They just literally want to see if you're serious. They want to see what type of person you really are. So for example, when I first became Muslim, I learned about the importance of being a good member of the family, being a good neighbor, so I started taking it upon myself to reach out to people, to try to maintain certain ties, to get together, to go out to eat. And by doing so, I would find myself in certain situations where I had to convey my beliefs to people. And there were certain things that I would not compromise. So for example, I've been in situations where I've said, let's go out and get some food together. However, I just wanna make things clear that when it comes to alcohol, for religious reasons, I'm not going to sit at a table where people are drinking and serving alcohol. And I found myself in situations where people would agree to that, but then once we actually get there, they would test me. They would try to order, which put me in a situation where I was being tested. Am I going to just sit back and say, ah, you know what, go ahead, it's not really a big deal? Or am I going to actually say something and say, look, before we got together, you agreed that we wouldn't order any alcohol. Now you're ordering alcohol. And sometimes people, they might genuinely have forgotten. Some people might be 
trying to just go against what you asked of them because that's the type of person they are. Some people might literally just be trying to test you to say, oh yeah, I just wanted to see if you would let me or not. And this happened to me regarding many different things. Now I do want to emphasize that I think most people, they just, they want to be respectful. They don't want any issues, but there definitely are people out there who will test you. So for example, when it comes to like saying Merry Christmas, there are definitely people out there who make it a point to say Merry Christmas and they want to hear you say Merry Christmas back to them. Now we shouldn't respond in a way that is rude or condescending or disrespectful, but there are many ways that we can respond respectfully without saying Merry Christmas. You can smile and say, have a good one, enjoy your weekend, take care, have a great day. Those are all very nice, respectful things to say. And I would say the vast majority of the time, <laughs> that's sufficient. Nobody's going to give you a hard time. But if somebody does give you a hard time, if somebody is really testing you, then that means one of two things. One, they're disrespectful. They don't like you. They don't like your beliefs. In which case, they're even less deserving of you saying Merry Christmas to them. Or number two, it's an opportunity for you to actually have a conversation to give Dawa. If they want to know why you don't celebrate Christmas, that's a great opportunity for you to explain Islam to them. 